Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bob's Garden. I'm Bob. Today, we have a PowerPoint presentation for you that is going to explain the concepts and terminology that we use in all the Taming of the Shrub episodes. This is for beginners, or if you want to review, there's good material for you here. So we're going to share the screen with you, and let's get right to it. So we always have to have a reason for pruning. So we prune for good health of the tree by taking away dead or diseased branches. We can also prune for shape, artistic design, and structure. And for flower and fruit production, that's very important because if we don't prune, we're not going to get flowers and we're not going to get fruit. We can also repair or renew various shrubs, and we'll be showing you videos of that later on. And we can prune for limiting growth, but you'll see that there's a little asterisk here, and we'll explain what that means in a little bit. So you have to be in the right frame of mind for pruning. Don't prune if you're in a bad mood. Don't prune if you're angry. Don't prune if you just feel like chopping something or that you have nothing better to do. You must be in the right frame of mind to get good results. When I'm pruning, I enter a state which I call mindfulness. I'm looking at the shrub and I'm deciding what needs to be done. And I'm not really thinking about anything else. I'm not thinking about uh, the bad uh, day that I had, or I'm not thinking about something I'm upset about. I'm looking at the shrub and I get lost in there. And the time goes, it, you, you just, when you're pruning, the time goes by, you just can't believe it. Like you start pruning at one o'clock and then all of a sudden it's four o'clock and where did the time go? It's, it's because you're concentrating at the task at hand. And so if your first chore is to get rid of all dead wood, then you're gonna do something like that and just concentrate on that. You're not gonna be thinking about shaping or anything else, but you're just gonna be taking out dead wood. This is the koi pond at my house, and I, uh, all the pruning that I've done here, some hostas in the back here. Um, this is a moon maple here, Acer rubrum, uh, Acer palmatum, Japanese maple. Uh, we have viburnums here. This is a double file viburnum, viburnum plicanum tomentosum, and a rhododendron. And you can see this layered pruning in through here and over the stream coming into my pond. So the best way to prune to limit growth is to avoid it. We want the right plant for the right place. So when you go to the nursery and you're looking at a shrub, you want to look at mature specimens. Most people make the mistake of getting a small shrub at the nursery and they plant it too close to a structure. In this regard, you'll see that the, a plant may be designated as a dwarf. A dwarf plant doesn't mean that it stays small. It just means that it's very slow growing. It will only grow between six and 10 inches a year, but they'll still get up to a height of 12 to 15 feet. So beware of that. So we end up with these crowded walkways that are not very good. And this is gonna be very difficult to prune off this walkway. And we have these poor plant pace placements. Sometimes you'll get lucky and get a tree that can grow right next to the house. This really does grow like this. This is Acer monumentalis. This is about 70 feet tall and brilliant fall color, pretty amazing tree. So let's get into some terminology. So new growth comes from buds. Yes, this is very, very basic. I told you that. So we have buds that we call lateral buds. While well, I'm in the uh, other videos, I'm explaining in the Taming a Shrub, and I'm talking about laterals, I'm talking about these buds that arise along the stem. So we, they can be uh, alternating like this, or they can be opposite. And they arise from these, where well, they also call these auxiliary buds, but I refer to them as lateral. The end one is called the apical bud or terminal bud. 
And then we have a space between these various buds, which we call the internodal length. So this is a fig tree, and I chose this as an example. So we have these nodes here where the buds are arising. You see there was a bud coming out here, a bud coming out here, and the length between here and here is called the internode. So we can see the leaves arising from the node. We see we made this cut here, we get all this growth. And when we cut, this length between the nodes varies. If we cut hard, we'll get a very large amount of growth and the internodal length will stretch, okay? And we can also get fruit coming out of the node. So we also have latent buds on the shrub and they take their orders from the terminal bud. So here, this little scar here and here, all the way along here are places to cut. And if we lose this for some reason, of course, we don't want to take this off because this is the next year's flower. But if we needed to, if say it was damaged or diseased in here, then we would cut at this point right here. And this will give the latent bud that's here orders to sprout out because it says, oh my God, I've lost my head. I got to grow again. So we also have these apical buds on pines like this, and they produce hormones, which we call auxins. And the auxins will suppress the growth of the lateral buds. So you can see this keeps this nice, tight Christmas tree shape because this terminal bud or the apical bud is producing these chemicals that keep everything else tight in here. If this was a Christmas tree farm, it would be very important to keep this leader in the center here because that gives the tree its shape like this. So if anything happens to this, we're gonna get growth going this way and that way. So in a, at a Christmas tree farm, if they lose this central leader, they can take one from the side and bring it up to be a new leader or, and that will again, revert back to this strong pyramidal shape. But if we lose that, then we get a very wide tree here. This is loss of apical dominance. But in some cases, that's good because here we have, uh, we put these trees in uh, for a client. Uh, there's over a hundred pines here. And um, this Pinostrobus, uh, we don't worry about whether it has a strong top leader or not. Uh, we can let them fill out and that helps us to get this nice hedge. So what happens when we prune? Pruning changes the carbohydrate nitrogen balance. Carbohydrates are stored in the leaves. And if we remove these leaves, then we get the strong growth because we have more nitrogen. The nitrogen stimulates the vegetative growth. And the further back we cut, the more growth we get. So we can take advantage of this. I was uh, putting in this uh, a crab apple in this area here, and uh, there was a uh, well, it still is a boxwood hedge here, and we couldn't get in close enough to this uh, without pushing the machine into the hedge, and so the engine burned all this out here. Couldn't help it. So we're gonna cut really hard on the inside and that's gonna stimulate a lot of growth on the inside here. And you'll see it filled right back in. So in a way, no harm done. So sometimes we'll have to cut a hedge off of a walkway and we can prune very hard. And sometimes if we're lucky, we get all this new growth coming back in one season. Here's a close up. You can see I've cut very hard in here, there, there, and through here. And this is all going to fill in very quickly. So sometimes we'll prune for aesthetics. Now on the edge of the lawn here, we have this Miss Kim lilac. And you can see we let it all grow out. We didn't really keep it in any kind of shape. 
But when we have a view like this, uh, we wouldn't want this large shrub blocking this view. We have a concept that we'll take in uh, for a garden design called the borrowed background. This here is about 20 miles away. And we're inviting this distant scene into our garden. So as we call it the borrowed background. And we can see we've created a frame here. So it's like a picture. Now you'll see that there's a little dip in here. Um, it doesn't bother me, but if it bothers you, then we will need to repair it. Now, what would happen if we took this whole hedge down to this point to meet this little dip? What do you think would happen? Well, what would happen is we discussed we're removing carbohydrates, we get more nitrogen, and we would get very strong growth. It would get even higher than it is now, and this would not change. So we would still have the dip. So in order to fix that, you're going to need to take this down here, just like we did with that repair of the boxwood. Take this down, leave this alone, and this will shoot back up. So if we come down maybe about a foot in here, that would work. So now I want to talk about blooming on new wood or old wood. You can use a reference book to figure this out by looking up the shrub and it'll tell you whether it blooms on new or old wood or a lot of uh, people will get this just from experience knowing which shrub is which. And you can also ask it at the nursery too. What we mean by new wood blooms on new wood, it blooms on the current season's growth. So you can cut in the spring and what you cut will flower in this particular season. If you've been watching my Taming of the Shrub videos, you'll see we cut to a framework. We get growth from that framework for the year. And if it blooms on the new wood, then we will get flowers that year. If it's blooming on old wood, it means it's the previous season's growth. We have a hydrangea macrophylla here. And um, it's a lace leaf hydrangea. With these small, the flowers here are left over. And uh, we remove these spent flowers by a process called deadheading. You know, I've always thought it would be a really great name for a gardening company, gardening business to be uh, grateful deadheaders. But anyway, uh, you have all this new lime green growth after you've deadheaded, and we're going to leave this alone. We're not going to prune them. If anything happens to this, you will not get flowers the next season. So that's what we mean by pruning on old wood. We have hydrangea paniculata, like the endless summer hydrangeas, and these will bloom both on old wood and new wood. So we'll get to that um, when we get to the videos to show you how to do this, how to prune that. So we, the next subject are heading and thinning cuts. Uh, I mentioned this, these a lot in the Taming of the Shrub video. When we make a heading cut, we are removing the terminal bud. And that will force new growth below the cut. And this uh, heading cuts will produce very dense, dense growth. When you see that hard pruning we did on the boxwood, those were heading cuts. And we get very hard cuts. We get a lot of growth. And uh, we'll get the greatest amount of regrowth on when the buds are opposite each other. But with shrubs that have alternating buds, a proper heading cut will result in guiding the new growth. So this is a heading cut on plants with alternating buds. So if we cut to an outward facing bud, we're gonna guide the growth outward. So we make a 45 degree angle cut like this and we'll force this to go off in this direction. If we cut to an inward facing bud that will guide the growth inward. Now remember, these are all heading cuts. We're going to cut one quarter inch from the bud. 
And in nearly every case, we're going to want to prune to outward facing buds because that allows the sunlight and air to get into the shrubs. Specifically important when we're doing shrub roses. Now, if we have a damaged plant and we do want to get into the center and regrow that, then we will indeed, we'll, we'll go to a, a bud that faces inward. So you can go the other direction. And we don't want to do any heading back when you're first putting um, plants into the ground, unless you have some kind of uh, major damage. But we don't want to go over the entire plant with heading cuts. So here was a heading cut made on a plant that will not bud back. And we got to know which plants are good at budding back and others that will not. Some of this is by experience. And um, the viburnums are particularly notorious for that. If we don't leave enough growth on the end here, uh, it will die back. There's not enough of the carbohydrates on the end to support any kind of growth and the whole branch will die back. So when you get a situation like this and you don't have enough growth out here, you might as well come all the way back to the main trunk because otherwise uh, it, it's not gonna work out. So when we have leaves that are exactly opposite rising from opposite nodes, our proper cut is going to be a flat cut. Here's a hydrangea. We have leaves that are opposite. So naturally we have a flat cut. This flat cut is a quarter inch from these buds on the interior. And now that we've made this cut, this will spur on these buds to have some vegetative growth and it's going to have two leaves on either side again. So you can see this angled cut on an outward facing bud and look at that strong growth going all the way up there. So we angle that cut when it rains, uh, the, uh, this protects that cut, it will wash off with that 45 degree angle. Now a thinning cut is when we remove an entire branch or stem back to the main laterals here. So we're taking actually thinning the plant out. This will open up the plant. It reduces foliage, which allows more light and air to get in. And it will produce less growth than a heading cut. And when you do thinning cuts, it's almost impossible to see that the plant was pruned. I've had clients come up to me and say, I thought you were gonna prune the shrub. I said, I did. Go look over uh, at the brush pile there and they see all this stuff that I pruned off. And, and uh, they're quite surprised by it when I'm doing these thinning cuts. Now it's important that when we're making a cut to cut back to a branch with a diameter that is at least as half as great as that of a limb being removed. Now, what do I mean by that? So suppose this branch was bad here and we needed to take, suppose it was broken and we needed to take it off. We see that the branch where it met the trunk is uh, of certain thickness, and there may be another branch out here, which is nearly the same thickness, maybe about half of what it is. And if we wanted to take this off, as long as we had this kind of transition between the heavier branch and a thinner branch, then we could take it off at this point. Think of this as a four lane highway going down to two lanes. But if we had something like this, and we wanted to take this off over here, then we're gonna go from a four lane highway to a one lane highway, and the nutrients and the chemicals cannot get out of there, it cannot support us, what happened to that viburnum. It just dies all the way back to the main trunk. So in this particular case, when you don't have enough material left, you can't just cut this off. You have to come all the way back to the main branch. So that will do it for our PowerPoint presentation that explained the concepts and terminology that we use in our Taming of the Shrubs video. We'll have many more of these videos coming up, so be sure to watch them, share them, and comment on them. And remember, be curious, not judgmental.